Cooking like they do at the best Indian restaurants doesn't have to be hard. In fact, you can use the same techniques and get the same results. The first thing you're going to have to understand is hotel gravy. That's the foundation and that's what makes this whole thing possible. Open your mind to that and you'll be able to cook with the best of them. Interested? Stick around. Making hotel gravy takes a lot of chopped onions, and I mean a lot. While it's never a bad idea to work on your knife skills, there's an easier way. Slice your onions in half and then top and tail them. That makes them a whole lot easier to peel. Once all your onions are peeled, slice each half into three pieces and pull out your food processor. Told you there was an easier way. You're going for a nice easy dice so you don't want to overload your food processor. Another nice trick is to avoid running your food processor continuously. Seven or eight pulses will get you a nice even dice. There's a lot of chopped tomatoes in Indian hotel gravy, so good quality fresh tomatoes are best, but if they're out of season, you're way better off to use canned tomatoes. Just make sure they don't have any extra ingredients like basil or oregano. There's a reason that Italian Indian fusion isn't a thing. There's one ingredient in Indian restaurant hotel gravy that you may not be familiar with, and that's Tej Pata. It's Indian Bay and it doesn't look the same and it doesn't taste the same as European Bay. I get mine at an Indian grocer, but if you can't find it, you're better off just to leave it out. The key to the depth of flavor in Indian hotel gravy is deeply browned onions, so do yourself a favor and grab your biggest, heaviest pot. Set your heat to medium and pour in a cup of oil. You don't want to skimp on the oil because you're going to need it. You'll see why. Once the oil starts to shimmer, add your whole spices. Cardamom, clove, cinnamon, and Indian Bay. Onions go in next. Told you there was a lot of them. That's why skimping on the oil is a bad idea. You're going for deeply browned onions and that takes time. Having enough oil will allow you to push the heat a little harder and pushing the heat a little harder will save some time. Don't kid yourself though, this is still going to take a while. After about 10 minutes, you're going to start thinking that this is going to take forever. Don't despair. You do have to stay close though, so amuse yourself. At the 15 minute mark, my onions are just starting to brown. Once you get to this point, you really have to start paying attention. An engrossing novel is probably not a good idea. Full disclosure, I shot the silly bits in the first 10 minutes of cooking. At the 20 minute mark, things are starting to look pretty good. Remember, I picked a big pot, I'm pushing my heat, and I didn't skimp on oil. I've gotten pretty good at bouncing balls since I started making hotel gravy. It's been 25 minutes since the onions first hit the pan, and I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. My pan is a mess, but my onions are looking pretty good. For those that really like to push it, I let them go an extra 3 minutes. This is what I got at 28 minutes, maybe a little further than I would have liked, but hey, it's still going to be delicious. 28 minutes, see? It's entirely possible. Now it's time to spice this up a little. Nothing too exotic here. Cashmere chili powder, coriander, turmeric, and cumin. I know, I know, I'm always ranting about blooming spices. Don't worry, this paste is going to get fried. And as long as I'm ranting, please make your own garlic ginger paste. Please? The jarred stuff at the Indian grocer may be convenient, but it tastes like crap. There's even a video on the channel, so please just do your taste buds a favor. Now's a good time to pay attention to your heat. The onions do provide a degree of protection, but you really don't want to burn your spices at this point. Pretty sure I'd melt down if that happened to me. Give everything a good stir and let the spice paste cook out for about 3 minutes, then add your tomatoes. The tomatoes create a safe zone for the spices, so you don't have to worry too much about stirring. Just let them simmer. Green chilies and cilantro add a nice brightness to the flavor of hotel gravy. Don't worry about chopping everything up by the way, it's all going to get pureed in the end. Just toss it in. Give it a stir and let it simmer for about 10 minutes or until the tomatoes start to break down. At this point, everything is going to be quite thick, so add a cup of water and give it a stir. Don't get too hung up on consistency though. We'll get everything to that magic restaurant sauce consistency when we make the actual curries. Let the hotel gravy cool and then transfer everything to a blender. And I do mean everything, whole spices and all. Good thing I tasted it, I forgot the salt. Taste as you go, it's important. There are definitely smarter ways to transfer things from a big heavy pot into a blender. This is just me showing off for the camera and for once it didn't blow up in my face. I just tempted fate there, didn't I? If you're like me and you can't wait for things to cool completely, always make sure you take out the pressure release valve in the blender. I learned that the hard way and the mess was spectacular. The burn on my arm wasn't much fun either. That's it, the hotel gravy's done. You're looking at 8 curries worth of culinary gold. It never gets old. This stuff tastes amazing on its own and what you can do with it when you make curries, absolute magic waiting to happen. I'll be making a whole series of videos on how to make curries using this hotel gravy. If you can't wait, there's a whole bunch of recipes already published at GlebeKitchen.com that use it. 
head on over and have a look. Just make sure you pick recipes that have hotel in the name. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like or subscribe or better yet both. And remember, life's too short for bad food.